we've been in a series about healing, and uh, so you guys know we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Good things are happening. This week we remembered uh, 9-11, and for those of you that uh, are old enough to remember 9-11, where you were at, uh, this week was a, a week of remembrance. And 9-11 was, was a time right after it happened that unity happened across America. In other words, everybody, political or not, began to focus on how much they loved their country. There was no talk about moving to Canada. There was no talk about a political agenda. It was really about what can we do to show our gratitude to America. And this morning, I want you to understand that we believe in the full sacrifice of Jesus, what he's completely done, and there's unity in the body of Christ because we don't all agree on everything, but we agree that he's Lord. Amen? There's a love and a unity that the body of Christ that the world can't understand. They really can't. And so the church is awesome because it's his bride and it looks to the Lord as the head, Jesus Christ as the head of the church. Amen? Yeah. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Mark 140. And I want you guys to understand the church is not an audience, but an army. And we are advancing the kingdom of God. We are advancing the gospel and the good news. And there are two types of kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness, which you and I got delivered from. And there's the kingdom of light. Can y'all hear me okay? All right, good. We're an army as a church. There's a difference, though. You could be an audience. And an audience shows up to be entertained by the power of the kingdom, but an army gathers to be trained for the power of the kingdom. So an audience folds their arms and says, show me the power of the kingdom. But an army says, let's get trained for the power in the kingdom. There's a unity together that the church can operate in. So much is happening on the earth that needs the power of the kingdom of God. The earth needs to see the fullness of God. So much so that, that we, when we talked last week about healing, that we as a body have to know that it's the will of God for us to be healed. Because once you understand it's the will of God for you to be healed, guess what? You're going to turn around and ask the Lord to heal someone else. And the kingdom of God is being advanced. The things that the enemy has been stealing from people over and over again gets bought back, taken back as the kingdom of God advances. This is the good news. You and I get to be a part of an army. Mark 140, Jesus is bringing the kingdom of God with him on the earth. This is before he uh, died on the cross and before you and I became new creations and part of his kingdom. He gave us the responsibility, but before this, he was the absolute will of the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right? So Mark 1.40, a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. I'm just going to pray. So, Father, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, this morning that the, the word of healing is here. The opportunity for healing, God, is now. And, Father, we thank you that it's beginning to set. The faith is rising up. And, Lord, I just thank you. We set our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, so, the man with leprosy came and he knelt in front of Jesus and he, and he was begging to be healed. Some faith teachers would, might say, well, listen, he didn't have much faith. This is why I love Jesus. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. This man wasn't bragging about his faith. He was going, listen, I'm not even sure. That word begging, that means he wasn't really sure that Jesus was willing to heal him. And yet Jesus didn't give him a history lesson. We talked about it last week. He didn't ask him to fill out a form that talks about all his sins, you know, where he's been in the past. And, and the disciples thought, well, you know, they talked to Jesus about that. What, what, what caused this sickness? 
Let's go down the list. What sin was this? Was it him? Was it his parents? And Jesus, knowing that he's the healer, that he's the resurrection and the life, knew that whatever it was, it didn't matter because he's enough. When you get to that place that you can see Jesus is enough, you don't have to spend all your time worrying about what got you there. I want you to write this down. Number one, you can always be real with where you are in prayer and ask God questions. So this man who had leprosy, who's begging Jesus, asking God if it's his will, he wasn't reprimanded. He was real with Jesus. Growing up, I went to a church. Uh, after I got married, there was a, a church where a pastor, I, I'd never been to a church where the pastor changed his voice when he prayed. I'd never heard that before. Maybe you've heard, you've been in churches where the pastor changes his voice, but it was, went like this. It was like he would talk and he'd be preaching and he'd say, you know, uh, Mark says a man with leprosy came and knelt. And then he'd say, let's pray. Oh, God. We come today. And I'm not, it freaked me out at first. I looked around the room like, is anybody seeing this? But I think when we were growing up, we, we were told how to pray, and sometimes we think we can't be real with God. And so I, I appreciate my parents instilling that in me that, listen, you can tell God anything. You can tell Him anything. And this is what this leper did. He came to God and he said, listen, I'm begging you. I don't even know if it's your will to heal me. If that's where you're at this morning, you're not even sure if it's will, tell Him. What we talked about last week, you've got to ask the Lord. Because He's got to speak to you. I can tell you it's His will, but I want you to hear it for yourself. He's constantly supplying. What He's supplying is hope. See, the man needed a change in his heart. Maybe he had had leprosy so much that he was, in that time, he would have been pushed out of the community. So he would have been told no a lot. See, hope begins to, to be deferred when you keep hearing no. Keep hearing no. And so maybe all his time with the religious people and, 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 and time with the people of that day was just no's. And so he hears about a Jesus. And this is pretty early on in Jesus' ministry. So he would have heard about him turning the water into wine. This is significant that he would have heard this story because all of a sudden now, here's the Son of God hanging out with sinners. A place where people are getting drunk. Some of you, maybe you grew up and said, well, that wine wasn't real alcohol. Hmm. Okay. They had parties. All right? And I believe Jesus could be light even around sinners. It's not that he did what they did. It's that he hung around them because he knew the power inside of him was greater than the darkness in them. And so this man who knew his past was at least willing to have some difficult questions for Jesus. I mean, at least he was willing to be real because he heard that this guy hangs out with sinners. And so he does. He asks him, are you willing? And look what Jesus says. 41, Jesus is moved with compassion and Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing. Today, this morning, Jesus is always full of compassion towards you. Wherever you're at in your walk with the Lord, maybe you, you go, I don't know how much faith I have. Listen, start the conversation. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. We're not here to measure faith. We're here to measure how big our Jesus is. Amen? That's why we gather together is to remind ourselves. He said, be healed. Verse 42, instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then... Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Now, this is funny. I find this funny because as a parent, sometimes you tell your kids to do something, they don't do it. Now, I know you guys have perfect kids, and my kids are very obedient now, but when they were little, sometimes they didn't always do what I was, they were told to do. That was a long time ago. That doesn't happen now. 
Verse 44, verse, excuse me, 44, he says, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest, let him examine you, and take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Now watch this. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. This is just, this is the Bible being real. This is the Son of God, Jesus, saying, hey, listen, I just healed you. I got one instruction. It's like the doctor going, hey, listen, I know, I know the surgery went great. We removed the cancer. But there's just one thing I need you to do. And you'd be like, nah, doc, I got this. We're good. <laughs> Jesus just healed him. You'd think he would go, okay, whatever you say. Let's go to verse 46, verse 45. It says, as a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and then he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. So he had to stay out in the secluded places. But people from everywhere kept coming to him. Now I want you to understand that this man made a mistake. He was disobedient, but God still drew in the people. Jesus still drew in the people. Does that mean that, Pastor, you're preaching, just go ahead and make mistakes? No, 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 no. Listen, I understand there's immaturity. I'm not preaching rebellion. I'm not telling you that you can sin and not be consequences. What I am saying is that Jesus is so powerful that he's drawing people in, even when this man made the worst mistake. Maybe not the worst mistake, but he made a mistake of not obeying Jesus. And Jesus is still drawing people into him. He's still able to do it. Whatever your past is, whatever you've done, Jesus is bigger than the past. Amen? They were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Now, what kind of disciple do you have to be to rebuke children? I mean, these are some rough dudes. I mean, what did that look like? I don't know, little Timmy. Jesus is way too busy for you. I think Jesus might have gotten a little bit upset over this. <laughs> One of those leadership moments where he's teaching the disciples what his thoughts are towards people. And his thoughts towards people doesn't matter with age. And so Jesus, he says, saying, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And then in verse 17, he says, truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. This is one of the most powerful verses right here because God is giving us the keys to how we operate in the kingdom. You do not have to be a psychologist to figure out how kids operate. First off, every kid is trusting. You have to teach a kid not to be trusting. But when they come out, they just trust. Number two, they're, they're hopeful. They're extremely hopeful. I believe that when Jesus came to the leper, it had been years of being outside of the city, he was lost without hope. He didn't have hope. And children have hope. You ever talk to a kid about what they're getting for Christmas? I remember talking to a child one time. This was not my own kid. I remember talking to the child. I knew this family didn't have much money. I knew that they didn't have much money. And this kid was listing off things like Ferraris. I mean, this kid was hopeful. That's, that's what God put in kids. It didn't change. It's not like, oh, kids are different today. Well, yes, how we raise them is different. We might be teaching them fear, but listen, you have to teach it to them. They're not afraid. They're hopeful. So Jesus knew that, and he goes, okay, the kingdom of God, you must become like little children. 
some of us have been, we've been hurt. So that trust thing is hard. You say, trust Jesus to heal you. You're like, wait a minute. I've been told no so many times. God says, that's okay. Have a real conversation with me. You don't know that I'm willing. Have that real conversation with me. If you don't trust me, maybe it's an immaturity thing, but at least talk to me about it. At least have that conversation. I'm asking you to bow your head and close your eyes.